My name is Ron Rohek. I'm an educational consultant that specializes in the field of sheltered instruction. That is, I provide tactics and strategies for teachers to use when ELL students are present in their content areas like math and science and social studies. These strategies are based on English learner best practices. These best practices are based on research such as the Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol, or SIA, a professional development model developed by the Center for Applied Linguistics, as well as years of classroom testing in schools across the country. From this research and class testing, my colleagues at Course Crafters and I have created a list of best practices that reflect their research. Number one, make your language and content comprehensible. Because my question is whether or not the liquids are going to be the same or different. You see these two balls? Golf balls? Right? These guys look the same, don't they? Yes. Right? These two guys look the same. Yes. But these two guys look different. Yes. Right? Same. Yes. Different. Okay. So now my question. Do you think these liquids are the same? No. Yeah. Or are the liquids different? So you think they're the same? Number two, provide hands-on activities. For me, this is the engine that drives the classroom. Our third idea is to include interactive instruction. Interactive lesson planning promotes active participation and promotes multiple pathways for discussion, teacher to student, student to teacher, student to student. Whiteboards and cooperative structures like Numbered Heads Together and Think Pair Share maximize student output. Number four is to make sure that you include a language objective with every lesson. Language objectives for content specialists don't necessarily have to be profound, but we do have to pay attention to language development every day. Number five Use scaffolding strategies to meet the needs of all EL students in your class. And um, tell me something about the bear organism. What is he? Tell me something that a word that would tell me something about the bear. He is brown, Andy. He is number six. Encourage collaborative or cooperative learning. Students put their heads together to solve complex problems. Number seven, try to draw from student experiences and culture. Look for resources that reflect student background. They need to see themselves in the material. Number eight, develop students' higher order thinking skills. Graphic organizers and sophisticated questions help students to think deeper. Our ninth idea is to try to activate and evaluate students' background knowledge. Use this kind of tool to determine what students know prior to an activity. Revisit it to see what they've learned. And finally, our tenth idea is to try to build in some ongoing performance-based assessment. Compiling performance-based assessments can be a remarkable set of tools for measuring students' performance. Make sure the rubrics that you use in design are clear and fair. Of course, these aren't the only things to consider as you're planning your lessons. But keep these ten in mind, and your student performance is bound to go up. Good luck. Mm -hmm.